Let's get to the part where we talk about the college football playoff. What I'm going to do first is tell you which teams I think I would like to see as a fan, period. If I got to pick this out, we're going to put my top 25 aside for a second. We're going to put the college football playoffs top 25 for a second. We're going to take what have we seen on a football field? What I would love to see is a 1-4 matchup between Michigan and Washington and a 2-3 matchup between Texas and Alabama because Texas and Alabama have a head-to-head that absolutely is going to be talked about for the next 12 hours and whether or not it matters. And spoiler, it does. And Michigan versus Washington feels like a Styles makes fight that I want to see. An outstanding offense versus an outstanding defense. A so-so offense versus a so-so defense. Let's see Michael Penix Jr., playing a pitcher's duel against J.J. McCarthy. Let's see Blake Corm against that defense. Let's see Michael Penix Jr. and Dylan Johnson, Romo Dunzi, and Jalen McMillan versus Will Johnson, uh, Mike Shane Rasteel, and that defense. I want to see Ryan Grubb versus Jesse Minter. On the flip side, I would like nothing more than to see round three of Texas, Alabama, okay? Because the first round between Steve Sarkeesian and Nick Saban was great. That was in Texas last year. Really came down to the wire. If Quinn Ewers is healthy, we're talking about Texas probably having beaten Alabama last year. They needed to wait. They need to go to Tuscaloosa, and they handed tech, uh, excuse me, Alabama their only L in Tuscaloosa by double digits. Okay? So it's one and one. I would love to be guaranteed Texas versus Alabama round three because I'm a fan, and I think that's the best product. I think we all would benefit from seeing – well, two SEC teams, as SEC fans are going to see it, but a Big 12 champ versus SEC champ play for a chance to play in the national championship game. And Washington and Michigan would allow that one of those two teams would also be one we want to see play in the college football playoff national championship game. Should that be the top four? Absolutely not. What I want, what we want as fans should not matter. And when we're talking about who gets into the college football playoff, because, well, we got criteria to do this. And one of those criteria is called a scoreboard. Maybe you've heard of it. If you are a college football playoff selection committee member, or if you're Kirby smart, you've never heard of it unless you win. And then of course it doesn't matter. And then we're talking about what did you do 10 weeks ago? Well, damn dog. I mean, I would love to be judged by my best performances and only my best performances, but we play an entire season, just like I do an entire season. I make mistakes. They make mistakes. You have to answer for your mistakes and you have to stand on them. Okay, you win all your football games, you were perfect. You win all your football games in a power five league, you were perfect and then some. So let's talk about what the college football playoff selection committee would do and what I would do because I think that they're going to line up here. So let's start with the protocol or the criteria that the college football playoff selection committee is supposed to be looking at. When circumstances at the margins indicate that teams are comparable, then the following criteria must be included. This is on the website. You can go check this. Number one is championships won. Okay, we're only considering power five champions. Number two is strength of schedule. Check for Washington, Michigan. Yeah, okay, sure. Same thing with a Texas or an Alabama or even a Georgia if you want to take it that far. Head to head. This is the one. Because we don't get that many opportunities to look at head-to-heads when we're talking about teams playing the college football playoff. But this year, we have it. We have the data point, and it's meaningful. Texas went to Tuscaloosa. They beat Alabama by 10 points, and they won their conference championship. So all things are equal. Power 5 champ, power 5 champ, one loss, one loss. We beat you straight up. We deserve the spot. You can't have Texas out of this college football playoff. You can't have Texas and Alabama. But I don't think that you will do that because, well, Florida State's pesky, dog. Florida State is undefeated. Florida State doesn't look like a good football team. Put it another way. There are three teams, four teams, five teams that we think could win a national championship, right? I'm just going to throw Ohio State in the mix here just because. But let's say Georgia, sure. Washington, yeah. Michigan, absolutely. Texas, uh uh-huh. Alabama, oh, yeah. Ohio State, let's see. But you know who we're not going to pick to win a national championship? The team that needed to try out the true freshman as the third-string quarterback against Louisville and damn near got beat if Jack Plummer doesn't throw them a pick, a pick. which sucks if you're the Florida State defense because you ain't do nothing wrong. But, baby, you win as a team, you lose as a team. 
You don't win as a unit and lose as a unit because if you did, Iowa would be undefeated and they'd be the Big Ten champs, okay? All right, that's what we're doing with this. So I think the way that this is going to go, and this is reflected in my top 25 over at foxsports.com, which you'll be able to check out shortly to find out where I put other teams on the top 25, but I think it's going to go like this. I think it's going to be Michigan at number one, Washington at number two, Florida State at number three, and Texas at number four. Alabama, sorry about you, you're number five. Georgia, six, and then you can talk about Ohio State, Ohio State at seven, or even Oregon if you're feeling, but once we get past five, who cares? Because we're talking about winning championships here. We can talk about New Year's Six Bowls and Outback Bowls and all those things later, but right now, I think those are the four. Because if you don't select Texas, we call into question your credibility, and we call what you stand for. It's not hard. A Big 12 champion, Texas, who beat in Alabama, who is an SEC champion, gets in ahead of them if the spots are full. You don't cheat the game. Don't cheat the kiddos. Check the scoreboard. As much as I know that there are people that love the sport that want to tell us what we should be doing with the sport, the kids get to do that. We already get to tell one 13-0 team you're not playing the college football playoff because Liberty's going to feel some kind of way about it. But you know what Liberty doesn't want to do? show up to the college football playoff and get beat down any more than Florida State does. And that's why we talk about the best four teams, because you don't want to put a team in a position to get beat down, right? If you don't think they're good, you don't think they're good. And sometimes you got to be hard-headed, right? You don't get to win 13 games in a row or even go 12 out of 13 without being hard-headed and without having tremendous belief in oneself. But that's why we as the people rooting for ourselves, don't get to make those decisions about ourselves. Your performance review, not really up to you, okay? This is their performance review. How did you do this season? You can't pick and choose the games in which you thought you were better or worse than. If Texas and Alabama played today, who would win? I can't tell you. It'd be a toss-up. But I know who won on this on week two in Tuscaloosa. And if we're not going to look at the games and say they matter, Nobody is going to take us seriously when we want to tell everybody that college football is the thing we love, we live, we breathe. We got to first be honest with each other. And honesty is, hey, sorry, Alabama, this ain't your year. Sorry, Georgia, this ain't your year. And while we have had an SEC champion or two, frankly, uh, the team that won the division, into the college football playoff every single year, this is the year that we should not have a single SEC team in because other teams met the criteria. It ain't about deserving. You deserve the world. You deserve glory and all its riches. You deserve happiness. It ain't about deserve. What did you do on a football field? Who did you beat? How did you beat them? Did you win? Okay. It's not out of your hands then. It's not in your hands. Did you win? Okay. Who did you beat? Cool. What's your strength schedule? Are you a power five champion? Did you win your head to head? These are the things that matter the most. I think that the committee will do right by all of us, but knowing that Boo Corrigan is the only person that has to carry water in that room, I would not be surprised to find out that the room is just full of a bunch of message board posters who don't need to answer for the things that they say or the opinions that they hold, like, say, me, whose name is on the show, okay? That's where I'm coming down with this. I got to be honest with you. You got to be honest with me. I can hope that the committee will be honest with us all and hold up the sport in this its last season of a 14 playoff is good lord don't we need a 12 team playoff coming on winged feet any moment now if you like what you've seen consider subscribing to the number one college football show on youtube the fox sports app or wherever you get your podcast